How's it going everybody? My name is Warner Fields with Fields of Profit. I'm a six-figure Amazon seller and full-time student. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I, my freshman year of college, um, I'm going into my senior year right now, um, but my freshman year of college, um, I discovered a hustle selling used books on Amazon, and I was able to do about $100,000 in sales in my first year, um, where I net 30 or $35,000 um, in profit. So I think this is a really good side hustle. Maybe you're in college right now looking for a way to make money on the side other than the $9 an hour or whatever you're getting offered. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and jump into it I'll show you how I was able to make this amount of money as a, as a freshman um, it's not life-changing money but it is money that you can make on your own time and that's why I think it's so powerful um, so let's go ahead and jump into a little bit of a tutorial for you guys real quick before we get started I just wanted to say that down below there's gonna be a link for our free Amazon seller discord um, it's a community of over 2,500 people answering tons of questions um, there's ungating chatter in there there's all kinds of, of great information in that discord if you guys want to go ahead and check that out it's completely free so the method that I used to make about $30,000 in one year on Amazon, um, really part-time, flipping $1 products um, was with used books on Amazon. Um, I'm going to go into the tools you need exactly, but first I'm going to talk about why I think it's a great way to start um, really just any side hustle, but especially on Amazon. Um, well, the first reason is going to be that you only have to spend $1 or $2 at a time, depending on what books are or thrift stores or libraries or, or yard sales. Um, there's really no um, high cost investment as far as getting into books and that one dollar could flip into as much as 350 um, I've sold textbooks that I found at a Goodwill for one dollar um, it sold for three hundred and thirty dollars um, so that just kind of shows you what is out there to potentially find um, it's just a really a game of if you're willing to hustle for it um, it's not easy um, there's a reason that people who sell a bunch of stuff on Amazon aren't still selling books um, it's because it's difficult to spend um, a significant amount of capital but it's also very time intensive so that's something you should think about as you are growing your business is eventually you're going to want to scale outside of books, um, but this is a great way to start selling on Amazon, so I'm going to go ahead and really get into the technicals of it right now. So you're going to need two major tools to actually go ahead and start finding books to sell. Um, the first tool I'm going to show you is called Scout IQ. Um, what it is is a, data, a database app. Um, you just go to Scout IQ. Um, you'll go ahead and click it here. Um, there's going to be a link down below if you want to check that out. It'll give you a free trial. Um, but basically what Scout IQ does is you can see on the website here, um, you'll pair this with a Bluetooth scanner, which is the other... Uh, piece of equipment you'll need. Um, I personally use the eYoYo Bluetooth scanner. That's eYoYo Bluetooth scanner. It's about $45 um, and it will just Bluetooth sync up to your phone and you'll use the scanner to scan the backs of barcodes um, and it'll link up with an app called Scout IQ. Um, as you can see here, um, this is the information that you can see when you scan the book. Um, so up here we've got the buy cost. So you would set this buy cost when you go to the thrift store. Let me zoom in here a little bit for you guys. Um, so for example, my thrift stores generally charge a dollar per book. So I put I would put a dollar up here. Um, I would scan the. Sh I would just rapidly scan the books as fast as I can. Over time, you'll learn um, what books generally you don't need to scan. Um, for example, little romance books that are like this size that your that your grandma reads. Generally, you're not gonna be able to sell those. So I generally would skip those books. Um, but over time, you're gonna learn the books that you can. Re you're really able to skip. Um, it's going to show you the amount of profit you'll make on here. Um, it'll also pair with headphones or audio cues of any kind, um, so you don't even have to be looking at the phone. You can scan it, put headphones in, and listen to a podcast or whatever, and it's just going to um, it'll make a, a different little like dinging noise when it's an accept, um, so you know when to actually go ahead and look at the data on your phone. Um, so here we've got the sales rank. The closer to one, the better. Um, 131,000 is a pretty decent rank. Um, and here's the e-score. This is what I think is really nice about Scout IQ is the e-score is the number of times it's sold in the last 180 days. That's not the total number of sales, but it's how many days it's sold on. Um, for example, a textbook could have an e-score of 20, but say it's sold 20, day, 20 times every day during those 20, um, the 20 days it's sold on, right? So maybe in August it sells 20 copies a day and then the rest of the year it doesn't sell at all. Um, the trade-in value is what Amazon would be willing to pay for it um, if you want that instant cash for it. The left column right here is the Merchant Fulfilled column. These are the books that they are sending um, directly from their warehouse. This is the FBA column. It looks like this uh, this book might not have any FBA books um, or FBA used offers, so you could really come in there and make a good amount of money off of there. Um, this is the Merchant Fulfilled new, and then this is the FBA new. You won't be allowed to sell these books as new since you're buying them from a thrift store and you're not authorized to sell these as new. Um, but there's also all kinds of other information on here. Like you can press this button right here. It's going to show you a chart um, exactly what day is it sold on for how much time for how much money um, it's a really powerful tool uh, and again there's a link down below for that
So now that you've got your Bluetooth scanner and you've got your database app, I'm going to show you um, how I personally found a ton of books to sell um, because that can be the tricky part, right? So you have your tools and stuff, but now it's time to actually go out and find some products. Um, the best way that I generally found to find those books is at thrift stores. This is going to depend on the area of the country you're in. Some, some areas, um, they're removing those books and selling them online. Um, so if you're in a really big city, um, you might have to think outside the box. But personally, I just um, went to thrift stores and scanned the shelves. Um, and even in cities like Tulsa, I did a lot of scanning in Tulsa. Um, even there, like there's a lots of lots of good stuff on the shelf. So don't 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 think your city is too big to have anything on the shelf. Sometimes it can even work in your favor if you live in a college town or something like that, where lots of expensive books are being donated. Um, but basically, you're just going to search whatever town you're in, and then thrift store, um, and then you're going to hit up all these stores. Um, you can also, um, if you're maybe thinking about going on a road trip to find other stores, you can look through the reviews and search for the word books. Is something that I would do in the past. Um, so we can, for example, we'll pull this one up here, um, and then you can search for um, any any word just to make sure that they have books, um, and that's to kind of plan out a uh, like a road trip of sorts. So they here that says they have books. It looks like it's um, not the best books selection, but. Um, still it's nice to know that you're not wasting your time um, so even if you want to do that in your own city you can um, and something that I did a lot was go to other cities. Tulsa isn't actually where I live, um, but I would drive to Tulsa and then to Oklahoma City and then to Kansas City, and I'd make big road trips. Um, and generally, uh, you can make I made two to f two to three to four thousand dollars you know every weekend that I did that. It just depends on how lucky you are, um, but you can really rack up some good money that way. And the nice part about books again is that all these purchases are going to be between one th one to two to three dollars. Um, so you're really not investing significant amounts of capital. Um, to see those returns, which is awesome because you're not having to make expensive mistakes to learn how to sell on Amazon. Um, and these are going to be some skills that translate really well later on if you want to go further down the Amazon path doing online arbitrage or wholesale or anything like that. Another method that I like to use to source books um, is with Facebook Marketplace or even Craigslist. Um, for this, you're going to look around in your local area, just search textbooks or search books, or you could even do um, VHS players. That's another thing that I used to sell a lot of back in the day. Um, these can be really undervalued on Facebook Marketplace, so you can just um, go ahead and Google the, the item models and stuff. Generally, you want to look at local pickup because that'll be um, the best arbitrage opportunities. Um, I'm not seeing anything significant on the VHSs. Um, this could be something. Um, you're just gonna, basically going to want to search up the uh, the unit number. Uh, for example, this is this might be a uh, is this a combo player of some kind? Um, I think yeah, I think it's a combo player. Um, but you could ask for model numbers or even. Um, they're, they're probably in the pictures a lot of times, um, but I used to do a lot of sales with these. These can actually go for a lot of money, um, upwards of, I've sold these for upwards of $300 before, um, but generally you're going to find more consistency in the books, especially um, around this time of year where it is um, text, like textbook season, um, or even maybe at the end of semester you'll have even more luck. Um, and with this you can even um, open up a listing like this. Um, and you can hold up your Amazon seller app, which you'll get when you make your Amazon seller account. Um, and you can scan the item um, so that you don't have to copy and paste the title. You can just scan the front of the book with the Amazon seller app and see if it's on Amazon. Looks like this one's a University of Kansas specific book, so it probably wouldn't be on there. Um, but there's a little tip for you. If you're sourcing Facebook Marketplace, make sure that you're using the camera feature on the Amazon seller app. Um, and then you can really just get through these pretty quick, see if there's any good arbitrage, arbitrage opportunities on these. The last way that I like, I like to source books to sell on Amazon is with online softwares. These are generally you're going to have to pay a subscription cost for it. Um, but if you decide to get into books seriously, you could look at this. Um, this is something that I still use from time to time. It's called Flipmine. Um, and basically what it does is it finds underpriced um, used books on eBay that you can then sell on Amazon. Um, so we can just go ahead and show you how this process would work here. So it looks like on eBay, this one's going for um, about uh, $19 all in. Um, and then over here on on Amazon what are we looking at it for here so you can rent it for 20 um, so there's probably not a big arbitrage opportunity here um, but this is just literally the first one I clicked um, you're gonna have to set some filters and stuff if you're interested in learning more about this software specifically there's gonna be a video uh, up there if I can point correctly um, but there'll be a video up in the top uh, right corner or whatever um, if you want to check flip mine out more thoroughly um, but from here we're just gonna check out this keep a graph um, this is another tool you would need if you decide to go down the online book sourcing route um, but it looks like it's selling for about $30 during textbook season. We're in textbook season right now. It looks like the cheapest is $34. 
Um, let's so let's say you buy that one and then want to sell it prime. Let's see if we can find um, the cheapest prime copy here. We're going to filter for prime. Looks like the cheapest offer prime is fifty dollars. Um, so we'd be buying this one for. Um, Again, let's just make sure it's the same edition and everything like that. Uh, looks like it is. Um, so we'd be buying it for uh, $19. You can get sales tax exempt on eBay. Um, when you first start, you probably won't have that. So let's just run the calculations as though you are a beginner. Um, so this is going to run you $21. Um, so the return on investment is not as great as going to thrift stores. But you can see just like that, literally the first book I clicked with Flipmine, um, we'd be making about $12 on 25% margin. Um, so you can see the power in using these tools um, because, I mean, let's say you you just don't want to go out to thrift stores and maybe you just want to um, use one of these softwares you can throw up a movie on the other screen spend an hour or two trying to find some stuff to flip um, and you can do pretty well yourself. so after you've sourced those books using whatever method that you prefer um, I personally would recommend going out to thrift stores and you first start using those two tools that I mentioned earlier um, that's gonna be a good place to start and then you can get into something like a flip mine software um, that's going to help you be able to spend money faster which is something you're gonna run into as you scale your business um, once you get the books you're you're actually going to send them in to Amazon to Amazon FBA um, where you will you'll box them all up um, and you'll send it into a warehouse um, for 30 cents a pound the shipping is really really cheap um, and then Amazon takes care of the order fulfillment the customer service all that good stuff um, and you pay some fees on that but to me it's worth it to not have to um, personally ship out every time there's an order um, you can kind of front load the work and then during the week or whatever when you're in classes for me um, or maybe while you're at your job um, you can then just watch the sales trickle in and watch Amazon send out those orders for you. Um, I think that books and um, a little bit of retail arbitrage is a great side hustle um, if you're in college or if you have a job. So if you have any questions about how to do this, I'm happy to answer those down in the comments. If you got some value out of this video, um, please hit the subscribe. That helps out my business. I possibly just helped out your business, um, maybe help you start a business just now, um, which would be awesome. Um, if you want to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff is going to help me out the algorithm. Um, but that's going to do it for this video, and I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.